It's very uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable. And I kind of like art when it's uncomfortable. For me, it's just hard, hard to look at. My mouth's watering right now because I, like, I almost want to vomit. Like, that's the feeling I get when I look at this. I'm all for obscure art, but I feel like that's more for a canvas that would be for a person to purchase. Welcome, guys, to another elimination round. For this week's elimination tattoo, we asked you to create a tribal tattoo that incorporates your own personal style. Leah, how do you think you did? It was hard to do with perfect lines. We are judging line work. Upon close inspection, there's a lot of shakiness and a lot of points where the lines just don't meet up just right. This is a really, really bad tattoo from you. You're looking at it. You tell me, is this your level of work? No, I was, I was not happy. The first side, the lines went OK, and I was running out of time. It was hard to do, like, perfect lines. These lines are incredibly shaky. This is bad. Welcome to the night's elimination. Al, you're up first. You happy with this? Yeah, man. I mean, it was up, you know, right up my alley, man. The wooden cross, the pearly gates of heaven. I'm not entirely convinced that anybody would, would think that was a fence. It's like Swiss cheese at the bottom. I love that part. It's my interpretation, it's your though, interpretation. of the pearly gates. We don't know what they look like. I'm just trying to stay more focused towards the challenge also and use the light and use the gray tones. The shading is not there. You just don't have any good examples of a smooth gradient that from dark to light, smooth, from black fading to gray, fading to the skin, and fading back into ink again. This was your time to shine. Yesterday, you understood what the test was. You defined shade. Like, you killed it. Why not today, when it counts? Billy. What happened? Uh, I want to hear your. Well, he came in thinking we could do the whole head. Today, when we got in, we made a few simple modifications, but by that time, he had just been contemplating and kind of knew that we were running out of time and, you know, made the call. We're going to have to switch it and put it on the leg. It's not even finished. It doesn't have front teeth because you blacked them out. Actually, an elephant's top teeth aren't very visible from that angle. Actually, this part right here would have teeth because it only has the trunk that comes off on the real but Japanese the trunk, design. As the trunk casts a shadow over the front teeth and Dude, the... we'll get any Google image you want up right now. This is just traditional Japanese. But the client asked for me to take different elements of the traditional Japanese. He wanted more of an elephant face. He also wanted to give it more tiger-like ears. I'll say that ear looks more like a Dorito chip than a tiger ear. No spots, no tail, no nothing. Didn't ask for him, didn't want him. The tail actually would not be visible if it was, if it was coming out of a black cavern. Dude, you, you've come close on a lot of tattoos, but this tattoo is this doesn't look like you did it. Welcome, artists. This was the judge's first chance to see what you can do on real live skin. This week, your elimination tattoo was giving a virgin their first ink. We were testing your fundamentals. CJ. How are you doing? I'm freaking out. I'm not a fan of the colored outline. Well, I was kind of going for a softer feel. That brown outline looks like <laughs> Look at the outline of that hand. I believe that over time, it's going to get even worse. There's a lot of stuff done almost exclusively with color, and I, th I think it holds up great over time. You did a pretty face, which bums me out, because if you would have just done it with a black outline, you would be standing in different shoes. You've had a rough start. Man, your ink blew up and this and that. I know, dude. I feel you, and I want to see you do great. And you prove that you kind of know how to do certain things by doing that face that way. But how do you do that face and then just move off to the right and lose it? You got to pick it up. CJ, let's take a look at your tattoo. Can you read for us what it says on that banner? First Corinthians 13, 1 through 7. Read it again. Sound it out phonetically. Cor 
Corinthians is misspelled. What happened there? I don't know. I think, I mean, just a mistake. This competition is not the time to make these big, big mistakes. And a misspelling mistake is huge. I don't know how I missed that. 80 to 90 percent of what I do is a cover up. So for me, it's an easy fix. How are you going to make that T and I? If, if I plug it real hard with some whites and ochres. Then what do you do about the jacked up word? It's just a difference between an I and a T. That's an easy fix. You should work at a plastic surgeon's office then, because you'd make a load of money. I call total bull on that theory. I don't believe it. The judges have decided. CJ, you do not have what it takes to be Ink Master. Artists, today we threw you a painstaking test of detail. Asian tattoos. Tattoo baby. No doubt you had a tattoo with a load of detail and the amount of time you had to cram it in there. But you gotta be kidding me with this lion. All I can think is what the I tried to do a 12 hour tattoo in six hours. Even before you had the time crunch of tattooing it, the drawing, the detail of a lion is not there. I could draw that lion totally different, but I went with a lot more simple lion. Uh, it kills this tattoo, especially in this being the detail challenge. I just feel like you're not here. You're somewhere else. I have so much to prove coming this time around. I really want to You have to separate show. yourself and do what you know. If you don't distance yourself from your fears, you're going to end up outing yourself faster. You got to get your head in it, or you're going to have to get out. Today, you all went head to head tattooing the same subject, a pinup. I sincerely hope that this is not everybody's best work. I hope that we're seeing a lot of nervousness. I hope that we're seeing a lot of people not setting their stride yet. If you feel like you really did your best tattoo today, then get ready to go home. I ain't going home. Robbie. This thing's like an alien with the huge eye and the little feet. I definitely lost my confidence. I mean, that kneecap looks like it's dislocated. And then the arm had the same circular shading on it. It makes it kind of look like it's in pieces. This is one of the roughest ones of the day by far. LT. It's a big ass mouth she got. She definitely doesn't come off with that cute look. You got to remember that when you do these small little faces, the smallest little mistake makes a big impact. My biggest mistakes, I went too small with the piece. But there are good tattooers out there that can bust out a pinup girl this size and do it perfectly. If you can't stack up to what we know is possible, then it doesn't look good for you. Angel. Step aside, young man. A lot of canvases wanted their pinups on the ribs, and the artists talked them out of it. Why did you stick with this placement? There was no changing his mind, and my objective is to make him happy. There's nothing about this that strikes me as sexy on any level. In the face, she looks bummed out. I don't know, man. I think just the pose with the tired look makes it look gorilla-esque. It's an unappealing tattoo. Tim. There's a lot of problems with this tattoo. The one hand that's up on the fretboard, that is crazy. Yeah, it kind of looks like a paw. The flowers around the ankles, that's tiny little tight detail. If you can do that, you should be able to do a mouth. You should be able to do a nose. You should be able to do an eye. The biggest complaints about this tattoo, it's the artistry. It's not the technical ability. Today, you had to use dimension to bring animals to life. Brian. Difficult to be positive on this one. It just sits really flat. It's not very good color saturation. The line work is wonky. The poor horse's face, what were you doing there? Did the best I could, man. If this is the best you got, I'm gonna have to wish you the best of luck. Aaron. This nipple is just killing us. It was the flattest plane of canvas, and the nipple just laid how it laid. You mean you didn't know what to do when you got to the nipple? I just worked around it. There's so many things you could have done. There's grasses and things you could have put up in front, something to camouflage that nipple in, but now it's an eyesore. It looks like the lion's blowing wind on the guy's nipple. He's got one side of the lip that doesn't match the other, so it's a little up, and he's like whistling. It's a tough one, man. Emily. It just really looks unfinished. 
This is light beams shooting through a jungle. It's a little crazy. You didn't give us anything in this to look at on a technical level. Everything is painterly and sketchy, and this does not look like you want to be around. This is not the last of me, I promise you that. This tattooing is some of the worst in the building today. I'm not going home. You'd have to drag me out of here with a pack of wild horses. If you do end up staying, you're going to have to learn how to do better than this. Today, you had to give canvases and their loved ones a way to stay together even when military service keeps them apart by tattooing a portrait. Duffy. One thing I will say about your portrait is you do have smooth, good areas of gray. But the really heavy cheeks that you gave her, those really weren't as pronounced in the photo. You changed their face completely by sagging her out. And because you didn't shade the two back teeth on the right, as dark as it is in the photo, you give her buff teeth. Hair is one of the trickiest things. The problem with your hair is where it meets the head. It looks like she's bald and she's wearing a wig and the wig is slipping off to the back. I think it's obvious that portraits are not your thing. Not all the time, yeah. You put a real crease between her bridge of her nose up to her eyebrow. It totally recontoured the lay of the land. You don't capture the spirit. You don't capture the personality of the face. This really doesn't look like this person. Today, St. Mark challenged you to take on his specialty, black and gray tattoos using only shaders. St. Mark. We know you to excel with your shader, but this is not what we expected to see from you today. A lot of problems with this. This is the first time since uh, I've been here that I'm, I'm not happy with, uh, with the outcome. This challenge is probably one of the biggest backfires in Ink Master history. There's so much wasted space of solid black. There's literally no detail except for that little bit in that head of that snake. This is the worst tattoo you've done on this competition. It's unfortunate. It's good for the people standing behind you, though. If you put a target on yourself, everybody's shooting. This is not how I wanted to come back. Some of the best tattooers leave early, and that was the case for you. And today, you're putting yourself in a position to be that person again. Today, Sarah challenged you to show composition by tattooing a surrealistic female. Sarah. These rays are totally <laughs> The composition of the rays are <laughs> It doesn't have that light ray illuminating glow, which I know you can do. And this thing is a contrast nightmare. In dark skin like this, you've got to leave large areas of open skin next to really dark saturated blacks to let this image be legible. You tattooed this thing like you were tattooing on the palest person on the planet. You abandoned the sensibility of who you were tattooing and just did Sarah. Cater to them, to their skin and their needs, not you. James and Clean, today you got to call your own shot. One of you will move on to fight for the title of Ink Master, and for one of you, this is the end of the line. It's time to see how you did. Clean, let's start with you some definite shining moments to this thing. Technically, very smooth application of color. The skull is the best part of the tattoo. I love the detail in the skull. I love the color in the skull. I love the idea of it upside down. But from a distance, this thing is pretty weird. The dagger is very hidden, and I thought you were gonna be able to do a kick-ass snake drawing. I think it's a kick-ass snake drawing. Everybody up here completely hates this snake head. I don't really like the connection of the snake head to the neck. The harsh overbite and weak power to the lower jaw, this thing just looks kind of goofy. The placement of the eye on this thing is what changes the dynamic of the face. The eye's just floating center part. Slide that eye back a little more and put it where it would go, and then it's not as debatable why the head looks so crazy. It's an artist's uh, rendering. The body of the snake looks like a limp water balloon folding over everywhere. Like a fat python. It could have been a lot tougher. Today, you had to show perfect composition by tattooing Medusa. Carolyn. The backside of the tattoo is very unfinished. She literally just has this little bit of a face that's floating in this mess that from a distance is really hard to tell what's going on. I ran out of time and I had to focus a little bit more on the face rather than the smoke. These outlines and this shading, it has a very single needle prison machine look to it and you have all the tools, that's not a good thing. You're on my team, I want to sugarcoat it as much as possible, but it's not possible. This quality does not stand up. You're hanging yourself. 
Team Peck. Today you had to show contrast by tattooing outer space. Matt. I don't like this thing at all. This is just like a big weird shaped rainbow with black at the bottom. If you busted the shape up in more of a dotted off pattern that wasn't so stiff and rigid, it wouldn't have that feel. It doesn't at all feel like a space background. Overall, I think it's an eye-catching design. It definitely has a lot of contrast in it. My problem with the tattoo is this moon. It's a little wobbly, and I think you definitely overdid the textures in the moon here. I don't even know if it looks like a moon. Today, you had to prove your technical application was flawless. So let's see how you did. Artistic skin design. These are the worst two tattoos y'all have done since y'all got here. It's anatomy, so weird. April, what is up with the extra pupil? The eye on the right of the screen is going crazy. You made the tear duct too big. This is not what we've seen from you so far. You two are the two that work the best together and seemingly the worst apart. Today, you had to show consistency by replicating a famous work of art. Black Spade tattoo. You tattooed The Kiss by Gustav Klimt. The figures being undone, big problem. You saved the faces and the hands until the last 45 minutes of a six-hour tattoo. Y'all are insane. Her face is what we call busted. Her nose, where is it? Her lips, a red smear. Had you chosen to tattoo this part first, you would have a finished tattoo. You guys would be solid as a rock, but now you're not. Today, you had to think outside of the box to create mashup tattoos. Matt. Well, man, I'm really not seeing the style break up here. If we look into the roses, they're beat. That red is pretty rough. The snake is pretty illegible. There needs to be heavy areas of dark black, oppositely contrasted with open skin to create contrast. And you did all this little light, soft, stipply stuff that just gets lost. This whole tattoo does not look like you on paper, and it doesn't look like you on the skin. Today, you had to prove your adaptability tattooing the undead. Let's see how you did. Mike. This is a terrible drawing. The anatomy of the goat is totally out of control. The way the eye sits in the skull is crazy. Does that look like a tongue to anybody? I think it looks like a tongue. You and do? I think it looks like a goat. To me, it looks like a dog with horns. Today, you are being tested on creativity, tattooing difficult body parts. TJ. What's up, fellas? This one is just tough to read, man. What are we looking at here? It's a three-eyed raven skull. I think on a gothic ice cream cone day, nailed it. The challenge was creativity and the placement. I put it on the knee and it's creative. The background up top, not a fan of. It's not making any kind of sense or anything. I was gonna like kind of wisp it through from the top and kind of wisp it down through the bottom. In that last stitch effort, man, I think you screwed yourself. Today, you had to tattoo a mermaid to prove your artistry. Amanda. The cleanliness of the tattoo is nice. The outline is very consistent, but the face is very strange. The shading is pretty patchy. She looks beat up. The mom looks like she's missing an arm. The baby looks like she's missing a hand. You can see that you brought the outline through the hair on the bottom, then have her hand holding on to the anchor, have the mom clutching the baby. It's armless, handless. It's a major anatomy problem. Today, you had to demonstrate contrast by tattooing a neo-traditional animal, Ash. These tattoos need a heavy outline. They stand alone. You don't have a strong outline. Your blue isn't solid. And please, for the love of God, what is that red? Yeah, I probably told her to do the red. I just told her to whip red from corners. It's not that. It's the way the red looks. You just don't put in solid color. This is my first time doing it. Not that that's an excuse. Don't abandon the things that you can do because somebody changed the name of what you're doing. You know what you're always doing? Tattooing. Yeah. So just tattoo. Today, you are being tested on composition, tattooing Japanese cranes. Let's see how you did. Midwest, let's start with you. I'm terrified. Jarrell. The question here for me on composition is, is that an ant pile? Because the size relationship from that mountain to that sun to the white cap and the bird, there's serious issues with depth. 
The sun can't be bigger than anything on the whole tattoo that's in the back. Is that a wind, that scoop that comes back? I was trying to show off some wind, just to break up the elements. You have water, you have wind, you have clouds, and tonally, and they're all exactly the same. And it's just a lot to take in. Yeah. There's not a harmony going on with anything in here. The clouds don't really match the water. The water's dramatic, the clouds are bubbly and loose. Today, this did not fly for you. It's rough, man. <sighs> West, you're up. Angel. The solid red in the sun, it's very saturated. There's also some nice soft gray areas. But as far as composition goes, it just doesn't lay out. The way the black clouds just bubble on one side and then bubble at the bottom, it doesn't create a flow. It doesn't create something dynamic to make the piece more legible. What is up with that wing? How many directions can those feathers flow? You're talking about the right one or the left one? The one in front that has feathers going this way and that way and this way and that way. I mean, it's your focal point. It's the biggest thing in your tattoo is the wing that's staring at me in the face that's completely drawn wrong. That's not what a wing looks like in any bird. Damn. Master canvas number two, here we go. Black and gray, females. Freddie, you're up next. I knew everyone would do something very soft and romanticized, and I wanted to do the opposite. I wanted to do like the woman's like owning herself, and it's scary, and it's confrontational, and you to the expectations of this lady figure. It's very uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable. And I kind of like art when it's uncomfortable. For me, it's just hard, hard to look at. My mouth's watering right now because I, like, I almost want to vomit. Like, that's the feeling I get when I look at this. I'm all for obscure art, but I feel like that's more for a canvas that would be for a person to purchase. I guess I just really wanted to showcase, like, stuff that is, like, pushing the boundaries of, like, what tattooing can be. I understand the statement you were trying to make because sometimes as a woman, it's frustrating and it's exhausting. But with this specific piece of artwork, the thing that is strange about it, is it a teeny tiny woman with a huge head? Because it hits that in between of not being sure if it's supposed to be anatomically correct or not. Like if you would have just separated that a little bit and made it where you could tell that it wasn't the same person, we wouldn't probably have half this conversation. For your first tattoo, black and gray, I mean, I'm pretty blown away by this. Sorry, did you say first? First ever. I haven't seen a piece of artwork tattooed specifically that has moved people like that. I mean, that's what art is supposed to do. I appreciate it. 